Okay, here we are again. Welcome to our second episode with Jean-François Tremblay, Mr. Ken Lab himself. I'm Natalie Nidham. I'm a holistic nutritionist and a bulletproof human, bulletproof human potential coach. Mr. Jeff Robinson is here. He's, why don't you introduce yourself, Jeff? Uh, my name is Jeff. Um, I run one of the Facebook groups online, um, Biohacking for Superhuman Performance, and the other one that's- With me. With Natalie. <laughs> And another one that's more to tailored towards uh, to chronic health conditions, leaky gut, uh, Crohn's disease, that's, that sort of thing. But my background is uh, exercise physiology and uh, self-experimentation. Excellent. Um, and we have Jean-Francois here who we've introduced before, but we'll introduce again for people who don't know him. Jean-Francois uh, runs, I think you run or own Can Lab in um, Montreal. I do both. Huh? I do both. He does both. He wears, he's a man that wears many hats, has a master's in pharmacy and a rather extensive history, of educational history, including many, many amazing disciplines. And he currently is the um, peptide guru to um, um, many of our groups. So oh tonight he's going to share some of his <laughs> wisdom with us, I think. Um, so I'm going to start just by saying that one of the topics we were going to talk about tonight was... Uh, Jean-Francois was graciously offering to run some um, testing in his lab on how long peptides really last after reconstitution. This is like a raging debate all over the place. Everybody wants to know. And these results are going to come. But as you can imagine, it takes time. It's complicated. So we don't have much to share with you yet tonight. Um, but there is um, one thing that I think everybody, we were just talking about this earlier. And maybe Jean-Francois, you want to talk about it a little bit, that peptides are not milk. And so... Yeah, I, <laughs> I mentioned that before. They don't turn bad like milk. Like they're good for three days and then bang, they're bad. Uh, they all degrade eventually uh, at different rates. Some will degrade very, very slowly. Some much faster, like mud C degrades faster. Time is in alpha one degrades faster, but uh, the the test we're gonna we're gonna do, or I think they started already. I haven't been to the lab uh, this this week yet, but I think it started. Uh, what it will show is when we talk degradation. It's let's say you test the peptide the first day and it's ninety nine percent. So then on second day then maybe it's going to be, uh, depending on the speed, but let's say peptide X. So next day, it's 98%. Maybe it degrades 1% per day. So uh, 10 days after, you still have 90%. And that 90% is fully active, fully working. You just get 90%, which is clinically, it's great. Relevant. It's very, it's still, and that's why you have, um, other uh, uh, compounding pharmacies in the U.S. where uh, they ship it already reconstituted. And yes, there is some degradation in the shipping, in the process, uh, but it's still, it's still good and it still works. And with or without that degradation, it's, it still works good enough that Actually, you don't, you don't clinically, you don't notice the difference. Right. So when you say it degrades, is it that, do you uh, know break. what that means? Like, so the proteins break. So do they yeah. become inactive? Like they, then you're just uh, getting yeah, it, amino they, they acids? Beca they, they become fragments. No, not amino acid. It doesn't degrade because some amino acid bonds, some of them are weaker than others. Right. So if you have one of those weak bonds, that's why you can that's predict right. actually looking at the formula, not mm -hmm. me because I'm not that good in biochemistry, but somebody who works like the, my, my biochemist, he, he, he can tell me, say, yeah, this one, it won't be very stable because of that bond, it breaks easily. And some right. other, like BPC-157, doesn't have any of those weak bonds. So it's a much more stable to start right. with right. Uh, compared to the weak. It's still degrades, but, you know, it's all relative. Sure. 
and that uh, there is a funny thing about the mud sea because I was when I was at that conference, they shoot out that thing. You know, you have to inject it within four hours. And I remember last year when we synthesized the first batch of mud sea, which I didn't put up on the website at the time because I had no clue of dosages, so I didn't know what to do with it. So it, <laughs> it's just there. But I remember before he synthesized it, he told me, he says, yeah, that one won't be very stable. You should make unidose vials uh, when you find out uh, the dosage. But after he synthesized it, he say, oh no, it's much more stable than what I expected. So again, uh, the impression I have of those people who came up with the four hours, I think they got that thing from the theoretical knowledge of biochemistry. They look at the molecule and some, they say, no, that won't be very stable. It's going to break down very fast. Right. But the reality, and that's why I decided because of what Alain told me, he said, no, it's not that unstable. So we're going to test it. It's for my personal thing and, you know, uh, uh, to know, to be sure. So we'll right. know soon, which is a very relative term too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll know what's the degradation. Before Christmas, rate. most likely. Oh, for yeah. sure. So okay. we'll know we'll know the degradation rate of mud C time as in alpha one, and I threw in a few other ones just to know TB. Uh, well, time as in beta four because today I was kind of corrected on the, my web page. Yeah, I saw, I saw that. And you know, well, because anyway, so we're gonna check that one. Uh, I will. I have. We made one gram of the actual seven peptides uh tb 500 i'll we'll put them in vial so if people want to try it um it has some advantage over the time as in beta 4 if you want to repair because being a much uh, smaller mm -hmm. peptide it's seven uh, amino acids instead of 43 so per milligram it's you more potent. Have, you have like six times more molecules. So hmm. it's six yeah, times. more concentrated. So it's not concentration. You have like more molecules per milligram. You have six times more. So the healing effect for the same milligram should be six times more. And that's why sometimes you may hear like that company that sells uh, that. TB500 dot something. Yeah. I think when they started, they were selling the actual seven amino acid and they had amazing results. And, and people, they, they take then the thymazine beta four and they don't get that strong results. That's because they should take six times more of the beta four to get that healing of tissue equivalent to those initial studies. So when you look at studies, you have to look at, did they use the seven uh, amino acid or the 43? So TB500 is the seven amino acid chain? The, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, is. and when's that gonna be up on your site? I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know? <laughs> uh, we synthesized it a couple of months ago. It was it was for me. You know, I want to try it, but I, well, I'll put it up if people. It's, it's, so you'll share. Uh, Plus it's cheaper, so you, you in it, but it doesn't do other things that time as in beta four does. So like what? Uh, time as in beta four has some activity on the immune system, not that strong. Time as in alpha one is like a hundred times stronger on the immune modulation, but it has some effect. And of course, uh, that video, that, that podcast with, uh, TaylorMade guy, Ryan Smith, where he talks about the dangers of peptides. And me, I see that and, I, you know, I heard that language before. Uh, about everything I ever tried and, uh, see, if you look at studies, everything will give you cancer. Because all those studies, they look at one pathway. I think I talked about that. Yeah, Maybe. you did. What you have to look is the net effect. And mm -hmm. yes, there may be a pathway that is pro-cancer, 
but at the same time, there is an, another pathway that is anti-cancer. And okay, at the, the net effect, which one wins? Mm -hmm. And that can be modulated by dosages. If you go high dosage, then one pathway continue, the other one stops. So it's a balance of things. What you have to look at, because story is, and particularly uh, time as in beta four, it has been used on the ground by athletes for 10, 15 years already. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of thousands of people, if not more, millions, I would say on the planet have used it. And I, and let me tell you, if there would have been one case of cancer due to that, we wouldn't know about it. You know, everybody would jump on that. Oh, right. And no, that, that's a clinical experience. No, nobody ever got cancer from using those peptides. Like right. the GW, the same thing. They talk, oh, cancer, cancer everywhere. Yeah, but uh, come on, show me somebody who got cancer because of it. Stop, you know, reading scientific articles, you know, little rats and all that. That's good. That's interesting. And you learn from that. But you still have to have a foot in the real world and see what's happening. And, and uh, back in my days, you know, the, the, there is even that book that came out in the 80s. It was that the title was that in the locker room uh, about the steroid culture and all sure. that. And there is that guy who came out, I don't remember, uh, Hatfield. He, he was a medical doctor and a powerlifter. And one day in a conference, he said, look, he says, uh, I never saw nobody die in the locker room. You know, he was joking about the fact that, no, yeah, if you look at paper, it's going to give you all kind of disease or, or problem. But truth is, nobody got cancer from, uh, or like the millions and millions of people using steroids. How many actually did cancer from it? I don't know anybody. Nobody knows anybody. And I, you read one case and maybe... It, it once they had the cancer that they didn't know, then yes, it promoted the growth right. of that cancer. That's right. a different story. Right. But to give you cancer, yeah, no, you, you what you have to be careful about is if you have a cancer, then you have to work differently, right? Right, but it, it's all clinically, yeah. So, but what, for the, what is really happening, right? But for the TB500. What so is it going to be more focused on the tissue, like on only, the? That's only. it. So it won't do that's anything it. else. Okay. That, that's right. Well, All so right. that'd be a, that'd be a great one for like the performance, you know, muscle building, you know, repair group. Repair. That we were yeah, or you know, you break a bone, you break, a, you, you tear a ligament, a tendon, or or you you throw in a mix. Maybe I'll make a we'll make a mix. You know, fifty fifty uh, of of both peptides, so you get the best of both worlds. Right. Uh, it would be a bit cheaper to overall because you get both. One is cheaper than the other one, and you would get but a more potent effect on the healing. Mm -hmm. With sideway, you get the other little things happening. So, so that's well, interesting. So sorry, because there's a question coming up, which actually maybe we'll just jump to that <laughs> one because um, the question was uh, what what peptides you might use for chronic tendon issues versus an acute injury. So might you then go to the TB500 for someone who's got an acute, for, for, um, uh, for the chronic? Of course. Because it would you need be cheaper more. cheaper and more potent. So you could use much less and of a cheaper product and, yeah. and still get better results. Right. So my, my question is how many people, I mean, most suppliers are selling probably thymus and beta four, right? Yeah, they do. Yeah, so that means that because I know TB five hundred. Everybody, we tested a, a few different. companies. They are all uh, thymus and beta four, and they use because, them interchangeably too. Everyone says it's the same exact thing. Yeah, that that was what the guy brought up. You know, he said you put TB, but actually, is it TB or is it okay? Oh god. Okay, <laughs> no, so I gave the explanation why because. People, they no, they even at the conference, Dr. Seeds, they intermix the terms, and we all understand that we're talking about time as in beta four. Even when you say TB five hundred, which mm -hmm. is not time as in, but in everyday's language, now it's assumed that it is. Okay, so now at Can Lab, there's going to be differentiation. You're going to have time as in beta four and TB five hundred. 
eventually. What, okay. what about a uh, TB one thousand? That, that that that's <laughs> that that's just a double string. I that, saw I saw that, that online. Yeah. Someone saw they were selling it for a lot of money too. Yeah, I know. It's the camel mar- ra- marketing. Camel racing. Okay. okay. So um let's move on to our next question. So there's the issue of bioregulators, which are very which are in the same oh. family. No, Do you they're want to ver- talk about those or they're oh world, yes, that, right? that's oh no, they they're very different. Okay, let me explain to you. The basic reason they're different is in their mode of action. Okay. Uh, most uh, peptides we know about, they they have receptor in the, in the on the cell surface or within the cells or on the nucleus, but you know the the normal receptors. And, and that bugged me for a long time because epitalon, with, which is a bioregulator, uh, you know, every, most people know by now that, you know, you take twice a year and you're good. And me, I say, yeah, why twice a year? No, I'm going to take it every day. <laughs> but no, the point is you don't need to because the actual receptor, uh, if you can call it a receptor, not a receptor, but the, the peptide introduce itself within the DNA chain, mm-hmm. attach itself. Yeah, and it opens the DNA chain, right? And yeah, it makes it dilate uh, locally in that area and each one a different place. It, but the, 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 the nice part that once it's attached there, it stays there forever. Okay. So that dilation is there forever. So the activity of the peptide continues the same mm-hmm. even after you stop taking it. Why you take it twice a year? Because you have cells that will die. New one will come out. They won't have the peptide. So you renew that pool of uh, peptides in those new cells. Okay. So you do it twice a year and bang. You're f- uh, I don't know. Hey, let's try that. I'm going to share a few things here. I'm going to share. Share. Okay. Can you see this one? You sure can. Yep. Okay, so here you have the process. First, the peptide introduces itself in the DNA chain. Yeah. That uh, deletion of the DNA chain is transferred to the messenger RNA, yeah. which goes into the cell and positively express uh, examples, uh, the activities, uh, proteins that right. are the expressions of those uh, genes. Uh, another, okay, now how do I come back from that now? You can Oops. stop share. Yeah, but I lost the, oh, stop share. Okay, well, I'm learning everything. <laughs> <laughs> so basically- All of a sudden I'm the tech queen, yes. <laughs> uh, so basically here you have the, the thing, it starts as an interaction between the small peptides and the DNA. Mm-hmm. which provokes a decondensation, that's the term, of the chromatin, yeah. which changes the actual expression of the gene. So that that's basically is uh, epigenetic at its core, yeah. uh, which pro- uh, increase the synthesis of tissue-specific proteins, blah, 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 at the end, regulation of biochemical and physiological processes. Uh, I was about to say all positive, but they're not all positive uh, in the sense that um, there is a list of uh, bioregulators. You have, now you have the trademark name by uh, Kevinson and his groups and from natural extract, where it's extracted from, and the and a couple, we don't have them yet. Uh, so you have 25 there, but they found much, many more uh, of those, but they found that they had no activities. They're there, but probably they're just like, uh, they found them because a bigger peptide broke down and then you had, it was just floating around. Like and, leftover stuff. Yeah, yeah, and wouldn't do anything. And I, I, I know that now they have like 50, over 50 more. 
but they're still not sure. They're still now they're in the process of finding out what they do, if okay. they do something, and if they do, if it's positive or not. Okay. So that's they're so they're finding the out. So for the list, but th those twenty five, they know to do something and to have a positive effect. So and now quite a few, are, right? right? Sorry. No, I was just saying quite a few of them are used. So the Russian, they use them in the medical system. Quite a few of these, don't they? Yeah. Okay. That's another thing. You can buy them. What you buy, uh, and that's another funny thing. Even those guys, they, they have a marketing thing. Uh, because they do sell in pharmacies the, the capsules that everybody mm -hmm. knows, you know, yeah, that's what, that's what you see that. over the internet. And they even sell sometimes on some uh, Russian sites, they sell the uh, extract of a, a bit like cerebralizing, which is brain extract. And then you have the pure peptide. And the difference between the three is this. The capsules, you will have 200 milligrams of extract, not of peptide, of the actual peptide, but of the glandular extract. Yeah. Now, we don't know what the percentage or how many milligrams of the actual peptides you have in it. They don't mention that. And whatever it is, a very small percentage will reach the blood flow because most of it will be digested. Right. So if you take a capsule that has 200 milligram of, I don't know, brain extract, then maybe you have uh, 10 milligrams of the actual peptides for the brain that you want. And because it's oral, maybe half a milligram or a milligram will make it to the blood flow. I'm not saying there are not they're bad to take but you won't get if you make calculation you know the more bang for your buck you're still better with the injected peptide now you have the injectable uh, because somebody was asking on the forum on, on one of the group they say yeah i got the injectable it's 10 milligrams per ml I say, yeah, 10 milligram of extract, not 10 milligram of the peptide. We don't know how much of the peptide, but it's maybe, I don't see it being much, maybe two, 3%, you know, because it's the whole gland. But the gland uh, has effect as well, right? Like well, I, I, I mentioned that before. Uh, I was talking to my doctor last year who prescribes uh, uh, armor for the thyroid. Yeah. Yeah. And beside the fact that he prefers it, uh, better people feel better and all that, he was telling me he signed this patient, it takes time, like months and months and years. Slowly, there is an improvement in the thyroid function and he didn't know why. I mean, I said, well, that, I'll tell you why, because you have the bioregulator peptide in the extract and they take it every day, every day, every day. A bit of it make it to the system, so eventually it does work. It does what it's supposed to do but it, take, it takes a long time. Uh, but, so you're saying uh, that, it's the peptide that helps to regenerate the endocrine of course. gland. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right. But very little of it, and still you see an effect that takes years. You would have that effect in weeks if you would inject straight up the, 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 the bioregulator. So again, me, the way I see it is, okay, they're, because they're not that expensive, the capsules. No. You do the peptide uh, twice a year. And in between, you can do the, the capsules, you know, to kind of maintain the levels and uh, whatever. I, I wouldn't expect huge results. If it's preventive, again, it's always, are you talking preventive or uh, therapeutic? Mm -hmm. uh, preventive, uh, even if half a milligram uh, makes it or a quarter of a milligram, well, uh, long term, it will make a difference. But that's the thing, coming back to the marketing part of it, all the studies, all the studies that Kevinson made were done with injected peptides. peptides. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I was wondering, because you, I don't see any of the uh, injectable and, stuff and online. He, he backs up all is the sales of the capsules with those studies where those results were done with injected peptides. So, you know, that's the marketing thing, you know, so yeah, it's, it's, so it's, the poor, it's like the poor man's peptide kind of. Um, well, 
not the they're poorest very, men. They're, but they're pretty inexpensive by comparison. They, they are, but again, uh, if you could, you could inject minute dosage of uh, of the, the the injectable, and you, it would be probably even cheaper than the capsules. Okay. You know yeah. to get that and minute the, effect. And the people that are you know the people that are trying this stuff, they're you know they're not most of them aren't trying to do preventative stuff. They want to see results quickly. Yeah, that's, and that's why. I'm, and that's the feedback I've been hearing is, you know, we've, we've tried them and we don't really notice anything. And then that's, and that's why I noticed that you started to carry a couple. And I'm like, all right, well, these are, you know, this is the pure peptide version of this. I'm like, it's got to be more potent. Yeah. And again, you have differences too, even in dosages. What you would do, like a pitalon, you do 100 milligrams twice a year. That's still... Uh, uh, that's not a therapeutic dosage, but you will, you know, uh, let me show you this chart. That's not even a therapeutic dose? See, no, that, that's a preventive. It's an anti-aging. That's a prevention. You're not. So you can but, take even more? <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. And I've, <laughs> I've seen with cancer people. Uh, it's ridiculous. The difference, uh, 20 milligrams, 30 milligrams a day. Uh, overnight changes in their uh, quality of life with uh, a pitalon only, like huge difference. Really? Uh, that, that, those are the graphics of using uh, a pitalamine or a pitalon uh, alone or with timalin. And there are other studies where it would be a pitalon with uh, violin. And that, that's the kind of results you see in terms of decreased mortality and uh, in, in groups, it's, it's, it's Okay, amazing. so this is, so this is Kavinson's uh, study, right? That he did over yeah, 15 but, years? Uh, yeah, one was done over 12 years and the other one on six years. Well, the thymolin's um, really interesting, right? Because that makes so it's much sense. Thymus, thymus, listen, uh, uh, if you have a strong immune system, Yeah everything will be better. You won't get as sick. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense. You know, you're less sick, you're going to live longer because eventually, you know, you get sick and you don't recover and, and you die. <laughs> so, so how much uh, of the thymolin were they using in that? Do you know? Uh, same. Uh, it was... It, 10 it milligrams? Was, uh, some study... It's funny because some study quotes 50 milligrams twice a year and others he quotes 100 milligrams so may i go for the full 100 milligrams for big year. yeah so that's so that's a, a what is it? it's only a couple peptide sequence of uh, the thymus the thymus it's uh, some some uh, yeah it's it would be they found that it was kind of a fraction of the 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 thymus in uh, peptide yeah yeah, and I suspect that's why uh, some people suggest now as an anti-aging practice to do uh, thymosin uh, alpha one twice a year uh, as an anti-aging measure, and I think it's a good idea. But that's the same thing. I, I like to compare. There is a peptide, it's um, Cartilax. No, it's for the pancreas. Um, I got them up right now. I'm looking. It's, yeah, it's, uh, oh boy, too many names. Look for prostate, thymus, steroid, uh, brain, bone marrow. Where is it? Kidney. Over. There's a lot of them. Pancreas, pancreagen. That was easy. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay, you have to keep in mind those peptides will literally repair their target organ. So with that one in particular, pancreagen, they took mice and injected them with uh, aloxan. Aloxan is a drug that kills the beta cells of the pancreas. So from one day to the next, one injection, they all... Type, type 1 diabetes full-fledged type 1 diabetes. So they had two groups of mice, one that they would inject water 
because it's like double blind. Even the researcher, even the little mice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, even the mice did no. <laughs> <laughs> you need no nocebo, no placebo. No, that's why I said yeah. before. Russians, they're very strict and very true with their studies. It's the the, the head take of things that is different. But the, the, when they do a study, you can count that it's well done. So, and they did two courses. That was more therapeutic, right? But they did two courses of pancreatin. And um, I could share those one too, because. So, so someone with type one diabetes right now, if they could get their hands on pancreatin, would they reverse their type one diabetes? Would they regenerate their pancreas? Has it been done or it's still theor theoretical based on mouse models? No, that's not the one. Um, that's a good question. And saying that, I mean, I don't know. Okay. Well, I, uh, <laughs> I, I wish I knew. I, Sounds like a good experiment. But uh, <laughs> listen, let me explain to you what happened with the mice. Basically, within a month, they would bring back their blood sugar to normal. Uh, meaning that the pancreas started to secrete. Uh, yeah, so they regenerated the islet cells, yeah? Uh, there you go, right up. So it did work with the mice. I didn't find any studies on humans. I, I don't know. I, I don't have personal experience with it. I know that uh, we have it now, so it should be on the website, I think, next week. Uh, five more. Uh, but I, I, I don't know uh, if it's going to be as dramatic as an effect. But within a month, those mice were uh, cured, basically, oh. of diabetes type 1. So I can't say that much about the mice. Yeah, interesting. Okay, well, that's, that's pretty flipping fascinating. All right, let's move on to our next question then. <laughs> okay. Um, how about this one? So kids and peptides. So interestingly enough, I guess we're talking now about, and I think in particular, this person was talking about children who are autistic um, and who've got some severe issues. Like, I mean, I know that, I was it Dr. Seeds or someone was talking about giving peptides to a 14 year old, but I think in this case, this person may be talking about younger kids. And, you know, from what I know, like the thymus gland is still very vibrant in a child. Yeah. So do you want to mess with that stuff? But yet when you have a child who's autistic and has all kinds of issues, what do you, is there any, any, well, in, in, that, in, in that, in that particular case and with a child, like, under 12, so yeah. to say. You have to be very careful because you know the, the way uh, and the brain, the way the brain reacts, and you're talking about the brain, uh, codeine. You take codeine, I take codeine, we're gonna pass out, you know, it makes you sleep. You give codeine to an eight years old, it's like giving him a cup of sugar. He's gonna wow. jump all over the place. You have, at 12, there is a change in the brain maturity that, many drugs have the inverse effect that they have on adults. Uh, codeine is the perfect example. You see that with other drugs too. Peptides, I wouldn't see that happen, but you would be talking about, I don't know, if you ask me, would I do it with my child? Mm -hmm. Or would I, you know, that's two different things. Uh, if it was my child, I would throw in everything. I would be confident to use peptides with my children. But, as, but, but as of yet, there's no work really been done. That's me. Area. Like clinically, cannot, there's no work. Yeah. No, because nobody, the, the, nobody wants to do it. But yeah. like there was no clinical studies on anything. Yeah, you know, science. Uh, they don't. Science is the history of uh, clinical practice. Yeah. You know, most of the time, 
scientists, they don't say, oh, let's, it doesn't pop out of their head. No, they see what is done and it works. And then they say, okay, let's go see why. Okay, does it really work? Or is it like placebo or whatever? And why does it work? And bang, they come up with uh, some uh, studies. Less nowadays, but uh, you understand what I'm saying. Uh, yep. it's like, yeah. So many times, uh, science is the history of clinical work. They just go back and explain what, what they was did, what they known saw. already. Uh, Uh, that's why, personally, I would be confident about doing it because I have a personal experience, a clinical experience with a lot of people and I've tried things. I've been bold sometimes, first with myself. And uh, through this, it always served me good. You know, I think I have a good instinct for that. So... Uh, because of all that, you know, by no means I want to ins uh, ask people go do it because I would, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's I'm, a personal a bold, opinion. Yeah, it's uh, not a clinical Very opinion. personal. I'm a very bold person. And personally, I would do it. Like if I told you uh, some of the things I've done, you'd say, no, you're crazy. And uh, when I look <laughs> okay. back, I say, yeah, I was crazy. <laughs> but I've done it. You know, I'm, but I know. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have an understanding enough. of the pathways that you're exploiting sometimes though. I mean, yeah, that, well, yeah, well, yeah, I would do research and everything. Flying. It's, it's yeah. what you call the um, educated guess. Yeah. You know, it's not like out of nowhere. It's like, okay, from what I've seen before, it uh, kind of makes sense. Uh, yeah, you know, or no, don't do that. Uh, and, and again, that's what you get. Uh, even Dr. Seeds, all you know, I have uh, all the protocols he gave in the conference, and he did it to protect himself, which is normal. That what I'm doing right now, but uh, at the end, he would say, "Say, listen, those are base protocols." He said, "After that, it's up to you to tweak with that and to find out what works the best." Me, what I understood is this. Okay, we give you the minimum dosages that will be work. If you want to try higher dosages, more of this, you know, then, and that's when, that's when it becomes an art. Yeah. You know, and an art, you know, the definition of an art is to do something hard, but it looks easy. Mm -hmm. that's when you find a real artist you know they do say oh it's easy yeah until you try it <laughs> so uh that and that's why i wouldn't tell you know just jump into it because i say so i i do have an extensive background in that and uh but again if you talk about autism and uh, attention deficit i i don't think it would make a huge difference i still believe that's more of a, a nutritional approach it's more of a gut make, well it's more uh, of a gut gut issue i mean the, the question uh, is also or the deficiency in uh, omega-3 and dha in the brain and uh carnitine and just basic stuff that is lacking and you start like six months uh uh, with the mother six months before she gets pregnant, if it's planned, and you you don't get those problems when, when you plan mm -hmm. uh, plan a good supplement uh, regimes. Yeah, from well, the start. also, I mean, I think with with autism, I mean, it's a big subject, but I think there's a lot of evidence that some of these kids, for whatever reason, are sequestering heavy metals, whether it's exposure or metabolically, like something's happening with their metabolism. Like, there's there's more than just omegas at play and probably it's different for different kids but um anyway but for this question yeah, no i understand yeah yes, the, but... this person was also asking about like kids who have gut issues and allergies and autoimmune so but i think your answer would probably be the same what right? i would do with kids to be on the safe side is go else. with the yeah. the bioregulators right that uh, uh by no mean uh, i don't see any arms in those bioregulators now you mean the, the capsule version right yeah uh, yeah i would go with the capsules with kids you know uh but uh, i would take 
more than what's suggested, maybe a few capsules more every day. But I would go with the, the capsules, yes. And with, because at the end, there are uh, extracts of uh, uh, organs. Right. So it's not worse than, uh, let's say, uh, liver. You eat liver or a brain, you know, people are going to jump back. But, you know, when I lived in Mexico, Sunday morning, you go in Mexico City, every place, and uh, those little stands on, the, like, Mexicans are crazy for that, or at least in the capital, they eat uh, ta uh, brain tacos. Yeah. You know, you have the brain, the, the, the cow brain, and they chop it up, make you, I never tried it. It's like a but delicacy. I heard it yeah, it's supposed to taste. I was talking with this guy a month ago. He lives in Florida, he's Dominican, and is in that movement of eating only meat and all that. But he understood that the, the 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 meat diet, to be real, you need to eat the organs too. So uh, he started to to eat uh, the liver and the kidneys, and eventually he said, "Well, the brain." Mm -hmm. And he was telling me, he says, "Wow!" And it's the guy is picky, you know. But he said, "No," he said, "It tastes." tastes good does not i've had it i hated it my grandmother would put it in omelet and like there's a oh no no you have to eat it as it is you don't cook it I, listen, or anything. Uh, what you, broth? listen 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 to that when i was a kid <laughs> uh, my my mom she would uh cook rabbits right and when uh my uncles were invited to eat my father and his brothers would fight for the rabbit brain that it, and the eyes. They would tell me those are the best, the best you'll get in the animal taste wise. And, and sometimes he would offer us and we'd say no. Eh. <laughs> and he said, oh, good. So I'll sell for me. You know, he was happy. We wouldn't take it. <laughs> so it cannot be that bad. All right. Well, <laughs> let's just let's just say it's a personal thing. Um, okay. What's our next question, Jeff? Uh, well, we wanted to talk talk about the uh, the growth hormone versus the the peptide versions, like uh, oh CGC, yeah, there is, this, there is this guy who uh, he asked the questions and he wanted the uh, Tim Tim his name. Tim wanted an answer on that. Uh, yeah, there is a difference. Uh, it turns out that the peptides, besides stimulating the pituitary to secrete growth hormone, mm -hmm. uh, have effects uh, in other tissues. So uh, actually, I, I brought it up. <sighs> Where? As, as an example. Yeah, OK. I'm going to share that. Well, we know that, you know, sup from what I heard that supplementing actual growth hormones a lot different than how the body secretes it, you know, in the, in the pulses that you can get used in like the Ipamoral and CJC. Yeah. Uh, you see, like uh, they took an example with uh, Exalarin, which uh, GHRP, but it says it works on macrophage and uh, adipocytes independently of the GH secretion. Uh, it changed the uh, phenotypic expression of the uh, uh, adipocytes from white to bad, you know, from white uh, to brown fat, brown, uh, fa fat to brown fat, which is a good thing. And it actually affects the transcription, I'm just reading now, mm -hmm. of uh, over a thousand genes. Uh, so, yeah, there, uh, there is a difference per se. And whether if you talk about this and both, you have to time, basically. Uh, so if you talk growth hormone alone, you have to time it, you know. Uh, so you do produce IGF-1, so, you know, the, the, the meals and everything. And, you know, you do it before bedtimes or you may decide, like, right after training is a good time. First time you wake up, it's another good time. Uh, so if you're looking at small amounts of GH, if you are supplementing with like, let's say two IUs, one, two IUs of GH, like for an anti-aging protocol, then maybe, uh, for sure the, 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 the peptides 
can 100% replace the GH. So it's going to be cheaper. You'll get the same effect, the same quantity of GH, plus the other effects that are not from the GH, but from the peptides in other tissues. So it, there is a big plus there. Right. Now, if you're talking about an athlete, and I won't go into dosages, but an example who takes 10 IUs a day of growth hormone, well, no, you would need to shoot yourself like every two hours, 24 hours a day, you know, wake up in the night, shut. That, that, that's not practical. And I'm not sure you would get 10. Uh, You're talking 10 about the use. peptides now. Yeah. So, yes, if you want, if you look at higher dosages, there is a point where there is so much you can secrete. And if you look at a higher number, then you can complement, add some. Uh, you decrease, you, you introduce a peptide and decrease how much uh, hormones you are taking. And uh, then you have the same effect and you have the extra effect from the peptides. But for small amounts, me, I would choose always first the secretagogues. Yeah. 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 And that's what I've, what I've heard is it, it doesn't, it won't get you to a super physiological level it gets, you know, it'll get the body back to it. Well, you could, you could, you could actually, if you shoot many times during the day, like. Oh yeah. Uh, I, I, at one point, uh, many years ago, I was more into training and all that. Uh, I know it doesn't show now, but yes, I, I was <laughs> I had a pretty decent shape. And uh, I was shooting four times a day and within, a month and a half, I had that carpal tunnel syndrome, which is a sign of high uh, growth hormone levels, like too high. That was too much. And was that I, with uh, summer, summer Ellen or? And no, it was back then already. It was with uh, CGC uh, 1295, no DAC, and uh, Ellen. Yes. Really? And how long ago was that? That was in 2000. Uh, Eight, two thousand nine. That's crazy. I, I didn't know that stuff has been around that long. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's been, uh, yeah. It's been on the underground for a long time. Oh, but yes, you, you wouldn't <laughs> believe. I thought Ip I thought Ipamorelin and Tessamorel were. They keep saying that's that's the newest generation. I thought that was within that. Yeah, relative, relat relatively. Yeah. The the second and third generation came out like very fast it's not like it took 10 years in between you know you had the jhrp uh six then two and then bang and like within months you know the the new generation would come out the, the, well and i think the, there was, uh, the rate of release is going to ex increase now as well like it's just now it's every day it, it's like it seems to have gone past a tipping point well no the thing is now what they do, they don't look for new peptides. Well, some people do because there are more. But, uh, you know, that number, there are, we already know more than 7,000 peptides. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't know all what they do. So no, now exactly. the investigation yeah. is, okay, some group, they say, okay, let's look at what does it do. So they don't need to look for it. So the, 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 the first step, which, okay, now we know it's there. Let's throw it in uh, some cells and see what happens and bang. And then they say, okay, this one do this. And that, that's happening fast now. Yeah. And my, 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 my prediction, uh, more so that now pharmaceutical companies found a way to patent peptides, not the peptides, but the applications. So that's why now you have thymazine alpha-1 that is patented uh, for its applications. Uh, Tessamorelin, and uh, you're going to see, uh, now there is a company, uh, thymazine beta-4 should be soon. Yeah, I so heard uh, PT-141 is coming out too. Soon, uh, yeah, it is. It, but you know, the peptide itself is not, they cannot patent it but they patent the application of. So for, for companies like mine, it doesn't make a difference because we don't openly claim it's good for that. We just sell it. Yeah, you're but, market, marketing uh, it for that. It, it stops another company to make it and sell it for the same purpose. So now, if a company, if suddenly they would find that other company would find a different application 
of that peptide, then they could market it, but for that application. After that, it's up to the physician, but I think the physician would have the obligation, okay, if it's for that application, they have to use that brand. You know, that's that's the game now. They, probably they did, they, 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 they costed them a lot in lobbying and everything for that to go through, but it did go through, now they can do that, and that's what's happening now. Right. And because of that, and my prediction, five, seven years, they're pretty much all going to be in pharmacies under prescription, not not compounding, just normal pharmaceutical companies selling them. And and if uh, and obviously they will push their sales, so they will educate doctors. And I see a high percentage of uh, uh, prescriptions in the future being peptides. Well, that would be a good thing. Uh, la, la, yeah, the new medicine. And well, I, I'm talking more than 50% of prescriptions. Uh, you go see a doctor, peptides. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I was listening to a, a podcast last week. I think it was the Superhuman Radio one where this one doctor was talking about how if you have thymus and alpha-1 in the house and you've got the, you're coming down with the flu. Oh, yeah. You use it twice a day, and I think fairly high dose, like maybe one. I don't know if she gave a dose. Was it? Did she? I don't remember. But one, one I'm talking, about Sarah, I'm talking about Sarah I think, Turner. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it was one and a half milligrams twice a day. Yeah. Um, was it milligrams? Anyway, yeah. whatever yeah, the yeah, yeah. milligrams. I, yeah. If you have a healthy person, though, you take uh, ten grams of glutamine every hours. Uh, you're going to have the same effect, though. It's going to be cheaper. Of glutamine? 10 yeah. grams of glutamine? Yeah, glutamine at high dose is a very strong immune system booster. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Anyway, so, so yes. All right, let's move on to our next question because we're, we've broken, we're going to break through our hour pretty quickly here. <laughs> um, our next question is, what peptides would you recommend for gaining muscle and strength? Can you do it all with peptides or is it necessary to also phase in SARMs? Yeah, no, I wouldn't count on peptides to build the <laughs> physique at all. Unless you're uh, older, like I'm talking 50 and up, where okay. the, the deficiency <laughs> of growth hormone, for example, is there. So yes, you will see a difference. Uh, but more so to regain what you had, not to build things that you never had. Right. So if you take a younger person, even straight up GH by itself, you take a guy who trains in the gym every day, does everything right, throw in growth hormone, it won't make much of a difference. It's more, it's kind of the icing on the cake. Uh, the, 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 in that case, I would throw in uh, SARMs. So, and, uh, for, you're going to get much more. Uh, so if what you're really that. after is physique, you're yeah. going to have to go play with the SARMs. Yeah, and then you can throw it uh, some uh, growth hormone secretagogue. Yeah. But, you know, that's more like icing on the cake. You, you, you won't get the, 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 the bulk of the effect won't be from the peptide. Okay, um, and here we go. So this brings us back. So we're now we're on question number nine. We're getting close to the end here. Um, do you have an opinion? And I think you kind of talked about this earlier, but we actually talked about this. We talked about the thymus bioregulators versus the thymus and alpha one. Oh yeah, it's the same thing. So as pancreagen is a bioregulator of the gland that secrete um, insulin. insulin. Yeah. Thymosin alpha one, it's about the same thing. If you take thymosin alpha one, you're not doing anything to fix the thymus. So a good thing is uh, in time, if you have a olive whack immune system, Yes, you use thymosin alpha-1, but throw in some timalin or vilin, 
to fix mm -hmm. the thymus and long term look at a bioregulator to upregulate the thymus glands. So you won't be dependent on the thymus in alpha one. So is so is Timlin is that a bioregulator or no? Uh, okay, no, okay. Oh, boy, I wrote about that. Timelin and timalin. Uh, timalin is the D peptide to amino acid bioregulator. Timelin, it's not a bioregulator, it's another fraction of uh, the protein, uh, I think, uh, thymazine. You know, the huge proteins where they take those branch. Yeah. as in alpha one, beta four. So timulin is, I don't remember how many, how many amino acids. And most websites, they sell timulin as timalin. They, they, okay. And I, I, I so even... That's like the TB500. And even if you write, if you go on Alibaba and type in timalin with an A, you'll get listening. And, but then you find out that even the Chinese, they will sell you, you Timulin. They kind of try to sell you the idea that- Okay, so which is which thing. again? So Timulin? Tim with, with an A, Timalin, yeah. is the bioregulator. It's so only- that is the bioregulator? Only two amino acids. Uh -huh. Timulin with a U is not a bio- It's a good peptide to use. So is that, so is that a, a fragment? I, I, I believe it is another fragment or another uh, byproduct of the thymus, but and it does regulate in some way the, the, the immune system, but it does nothing at fixing the core problem like a weak thymus or immune system. Right. So it's almost like taking insulin versus exactly. fixing your pancreas. There you right? go. So, of course, if you have a deficient pancreas, I'm not going to tell you stop taking insulin, we'll give you the bioregulator. Probably you'll be dead by then, by the time it worked. Yeah. So, no, yeah, take your insulin, but start to use the bioregulator and eventually you'll see that, oh, I need less, you know, you control your blood glucose, you say, oh, with, now it's too high, I have to decrease my uh, my insulin intakes and bang, now you're fixing the problem. You're not patching it. And that's, that's what seems really exciting about the bioregulators is, you know, everyone talks about getting to the root of the issue. And if you can, you know, reboot these systems and get them to rebuild properly, then you can really get some exactly. long-term Exactly. That's change. why, that's why yeah. they're, in, to me, they're like two different classes. But complementary in a way. Like uh, you have the same thing in naturopathy as in medicine. It's called medicine. It's allopathic medicine. Mm -hmm. You have allopathic uh, naturopathy and you have allopathic peptide therapies. Allopathic means you fix the symptoms, but you don't look at the root cause of it. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you have a headache, you go see a doctor, it's going to take, take uh, ibuprofen, right? Or aspirin. You go see a naturopath, it's going to tell you, okay, take that plant. That's going to help. But it's not going to fix the root problem. It's mm -hmm. just going to get rid mm -hmm. of the headache. And now we see that with peptides. You have this, take those peptides. Yeah, you're going to fix things. You're going to regulate things. Uh, example, uh, Crohn disease, you, you take BPC, high dosages for a certain time. That's why I say you, you're not seeing a healing of the condition. You see a remission of for as long as you take the peptides and everything, and then you have to continue. But what did you do to fix the core? Why yeah. do you have Crohn yeah. to start with? That's what you have to look at eventually. Yeah. No, yeah, do the BPC. So at, at least you get relief and, you know, then but change your lifestyle. Yeah. without pain, without anything, then we'll look at what's the core of the problem. So uh, I see the bioregulators. And when I started that company, that's what I had in mind to begin with. First, Epitalon, and I wanted to 
come out with all the other bioregulators. And then the other one came out and then the SARMs and, you know, it took a lot. But now I'm steering back to what I wanted initially is to offer those bioregulators that they are expensive, but not that expensive because it take twice a year. So it kind of amortigates because out of 12 months, you're going to be 11, you're not going to take it. So. So is there so is there a general dosing for those? Because it looks like they mostly come in a hundred milligrams. So is it similar yeah. to the the uh, all, all the studies, Kevinson, nobody. I don't know anybody who tweaked with it. It's uh, the same protocol, man, woman. Uh, me so is it twenty uh, milligrams for ten days, or is it ten milligrams for twenty? I, I prefer five for twenty. Five for twenty. Yeah. Or even three for 33 days, something like that. And and they're amazingly stable. They won't degrade in a month. <laughs> so if we, sh if we shake them, it doesn't, doesn't break them? We can, oh, we can that's shake okay. Them. Yeah, yeah, because don't, I had some. Don't no, shake there was, the peptides. Uh, I got there, so there much was, email for that. Oh, I know you Oh, did. boy. Yeah, we're going to. destroying it. You sent uh, me out for slaughter, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. That, that's why I asked you to do it. <laughs> okay, I can take it. Even, but I, no. even I cringed. I was like, oh, no, she's shaking it. Uh, yeah, I know. Some people probably started to cry or something. <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll, we'll test it. You know, that's another test I added after the feedbacks from the video. We will listen, test it. I've we'll... been using it, and I'm loving that stuff. So. But listen, uh, as... All, all those uh, HPLC tests we show on the web page, percentage of quality, uh, maybe people, they don't know, but the last step after, okay, we purify, we do everything, we, we uh, uh, filter, we do all kinds of things for, with the peptide in liquid just before we put in vial. The last step is we put it in uh, ultrasonic bath. It may seem like nothing, but that doesn't, there is not one molecule of the peptide that is not shaken <laughs> and for about a minute, you know, to be sure that it's 100% dissolved. So that, that's, uh, shake that like that, that's nothing. Uh, put it in an ultrasonic bath for a minute, that is shaking and they're <laughs> all shaken. And then we do the HPLC test and the purity is not affected by that shaking at all. But we're going to do it anyway because people, they want, okay, if you shake it like that, no, okay, we will shake it like that for like 30 seconds. And then right away, you know, we'll take the HPLC before, then shake it, and then retest it and we'll, we'll show the results. I don't know when, it's going to come out soon, but we will do it so people know. And uh, we'll do it, or maybe peptide science, you could ask them to do it. I'm sure they would be happy to do that, that kind of thing. I can't. Thing. I don't buy from peptide science. So <laughs> I can't help you there. I have no relationship. I have no relationship. Lab, with you know, in, in their U.S. labs, they, they could do that, I'm sure. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh <laughs> okay, last question, Monsieur Tremblay. Yes, sorry. I had to You've say done, that. yeah, I know. It's okay. You can, you can get your digs in. It's okay. Um, and I frankly, I don't care because it's not directed at yeah. me. Um, so we know that you've tried MOTC and, oh, and, oh, oh, and, boy. and NAD injections. So this, I know the answer to this because you oh, told me. Man. But this person wants to know what, what do you comp compare and contrast? What do you think is more powerful? MOTC. Yeah, all the way. With uh, this listen, in, right? When, when I did, uh, it was like a few days after my podcast with Ben Greenfield. I was in uh, Silicon Valley with Matt Cook and I had NED Plus. So that's not even half a year. And wow, I loved it. When it kicked in, you know, energy, everything. Wow. So with Matt C, I got the same thing. But it was like NED plus on steroids. Oh boy. <laughs> Listen, there was nights I would sleep only three hours because of work and things and three hours I would sleep. The next day, I wouldn't feel any fatigue. I would mm -hmm. go through the day same as if I had slept seven, eight hours. 
it was like, whoa, what's happening? You know, I should be tired. I don't feel like, no, wow. Uh, now I've been on Matsi for three weeks. Now I'm going to do it for a month and then st and do one shot. Uh, I I'll see what happens when I stop. I don't know if that effect is transient, only when you take it or... Because you're taking it every day, right? Every day, every day. And you're doing a dose every day that some people do in a week. Yeah, but... You're doing I a classic... Uh, well, that, 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 that's what they that's what they've got the syringe in his hand right now oh yeah that needs to be uh, i'm like is that a syringe <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh, no listen it it depends and i've and i'm going back in two weeks i'll be back with matt i, I shipped him i think 10 vials of matsis for himself to try uh did, did you see his uh Matt did a thing on Facebook, you know, where it's not on posted, but it's on top there. I'll send you the link. But at one point, he does uh, IVs of uh, peptides to um, Ben, Ben Greenfield. Oh, yeah. And, and if you look, it, it shows them very fast, but you see they're, they're my peptides. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> product placement. Product placement. <laughs> so I believe that Ben is still alive today. So it's all good. It's all good. Uh, but uh, I, I'll know in about eight days, I'll stop and then I'll see how I feel after a week mm -hmm. too, if that effects remains like with the NED plus. And then uh, that's why I'm going, uh, I'm going to see him again to discuss some of his new therapies and ta da da we can introduce peptides. And so and, uh, are you taking anything for, um are you are you supplementing at all with anything to mitigate any re extra reactive oxygen species that are being produced? Like when you're, because the MOTSI basically boosts the mitochondria to be more yeah. productive, right? So yeah. in theory, do you not do you somehow need to provide more substrate or to mitigate the extra activity of the mitochondria? because there's a downside to that, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, that, that's one thing I'd like to mention too. And, and you know, you don't, I don't want to sound naive about peptides. You know, I, I, I do believe that in nature, the, that Stephen Hawking would say it, you know, there is no free lunch. Oh, yeah. I was just gonna say it. So uh, probably somewhere, somehow you pay a price. Yes. Uh, but it's always a question of, you know, like, okay, I've read today on another place, some people, they were asking, uh, you know, about testosterone replacement therapy. And it seems that people uh, with high t testosterone, they live uh, longer, uh, less, they live a bit less than people with low testosterone. Yes, but they're happier. <laughs> okay. And the, the guy, I love the, the guy's answer. He says, yeah, sure. He said, in nukes, you know, that castrated men, they live longer. That's proven. So what do you prefer? You know, <laughs> so, so I'll be a bit blunt, but you know, do you want to keep your balls and live a little less or have your balls cut off and you're, you will live longer? It's a question of quality of life too. Sure. What do you, what do you want? It's not all... Uh, living longer to me it's not no of course not it's quality of life but but i'm just saying like let's say if you did need more support in another way you could provide it it's not yeah it i didn't I I, 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 I I i didn't take that far i just you uh, haven't gone that far no I, because I, I, chris master, I just shot it and I okay <laughs> no, cause, cause chris master john for example did a really good yeah. video on nad right yes. and he says you know, if you are going to use NAD, you may need to bring more methyl groups to the party. So you want to either supplement with choline or there was one other thing he was talking about. Like you basically just want to give your body more methyl donors so you're not depleting. Oh, but okay. Hey, it's funny because I have here what I take always in the morning. First thing, I think a uh, knack. Yeah. I think almost two... Uh, two grams of it in the morning. I have that, that's a Canadian company. It's a multivitamin. I take six of tablets. To, there is that folate thing in it and a bunch of stuff. <laughs> that folate thing? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I, I'm a bit dyslexic. Uh, I am. 
5-methylfolate, yes. And Cognitex, they don't make it anymore, but uh, with everything, but uh, there is alpha GPC in it. And uh, for people with the brain fog yeah. in the morning, alpha GPC, 1.2 grams. In the morning with your coffee, no more brain fog. Really? Forget, forget MCT, alpha GPC. What, but uh, 1.2 grams. Can you All mix right. that right in with your coffee? No, well, it's yeah, in, uh, it with... in capsules. Can you, can you blend it into the coffee? <laughs> well, you could, right you, could, you could get the father. I, I, I don't know about the taste. Well, it's a bit of better. And, uh, and I, yeah. I, I, I think you wanted to know, yeah, between NAD plus and M&M and... &M and uh, NMR. Yeah, and the... the uh, uh, NR, sorry, NAD plus. Yeah, that's NMN another one and I use sometimes. Which one's that? Uh, Neogen. Oh, with, the true Neogen. Oh, oh Neogen. With uh, quercetin and resveratrol, and uh, uh, I, I don't get any kickback, but Life Extension, they have very, very good supplements at very good prices. Uh, I actually got a really good NAD given to me last week by, I think the company's Life Sciences. Mm -hmm. And it's a Nintra nasal spray. It's really, I, I would say that I definitely feel a lift from that. When well, I, I, I remember a podcast that Ben did on NAD plus, and I don't remember the name of the researcher, the ad, but see, that's the thing on paper. NAD plus IV shouldn't work. It shouldn't because I don't uh, because it's a dephosphate I think and because of those phosphate they cannot enter the cells. Yeah. In theory, um, mm -hmm. see that's that's a perfect example. On paper, you see that and you say no, it's not it's not going to work. You have the therapy and it does work. So sometimes there is more happening that than what you see on papers. So the researcher would say no, don't do it this way because. Uh, it's not going to work. It's a, it, it, it kind of didn't understand why people were raving about it because they said, no, on paper, it's not working. So don't take it. Well, you know, clinically it works. So it's not yeah. always on the papers. Uh, if people are to do an AD plus, and that's kind of common practice, you do the therapy and in between you do those uh, supplements, so you can wait longer. You kind of maintain the levels. So you're saying the NMN and the NR. Yeah. So you, you, okay. you still do the IV like to jumpstart mm -hmm. and then maintain the levels. So instead of going every four months, maybe you'll need every eight months, you know, because I see. You, you maintain or you, you slow down the decrease again. Uh, a friend of mine uh, was very well known in the field, so companies would send him cases, and he told me just to be sure. He even took he was taking bottles at in the same day of those um, uh, Neogen, and said, "No, it does nothing." Uh, he said, "I get one day of IVs, and bang, I see the difference right away." So. What's happening on papers sometimes doesn't translate in real life. Uh, I don't say they don't do anything, but I see them as a supplement to the main therapy. I still believe in the IVs. Right. Uh, okay. But coming back to the mud C, I, I, I should know in about a month, you know, like... After I, st well, I, I'll maintain. After that, I'll take like one shot a week to, to maintain. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll see if I keep that uh, thing going. Uh, well, because, well, the MOTC binds to the mitochondria, right? And so, in theory, once yeah. that mitochondria, you know. Yeah, but you have that or, thing where, exactly. So uh, that's why you do it after once a week, kind of maintaining, but probably you'll see a drop uh, eventually. Because Matsi doesn't last very long in the body. Like that, it has a very short life after, uh, in, in the, after in, injection. In the blood, it doesn't in last. In the blood, it's like. Yeah, complete. but that's not where you want it. So you don't care oh, if it so, doesn't yeah, last long in the blood. 
<laughs> yeah, not doing anything in the blood. Uh, the, the blood levels are, is not a good indicator. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, well, I, you know, that's the end of our questions, I think. Jeff, do you have anything wait. else? No, Fo wait. Some Fox 04, someone was very interested. Yeah, uh, I'm still alive. Okay, <laughs> that's the thing. There is so little research done on it and so little um, clinical experience with it. Obviously, because of the price, it's hard to get people <laughs> <laughs> to say, okay, so that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I wanted to do it for, uh, okay, because you have to be careful with that product. You know, somewhere somebody wrote, yeah, the guy died. I don't know, I don't think he died. <laughs> I think that, but it, it can, because, it kills senescent cells big time, but for the ratio, it kills about one sane cell for every 10 senescent cells that are killed. That's why the next generation they're working on, it's gonna kill a uh, hundred. It's gonna be 10 times more dead senescent cells to sane cells. So that's a big jump, that's a big difference. So I think right now with the Fuxo 4 DRIs, as it is, I wouldn't go on the full therapy with it, like three months at three times a day and all that. Uh, unless, unless you are a cancer patient, they have shown amazing results uh, with cancer people. They would alternate uh, chemotherapy with Fuxo 4. Really? Uh, Where did they do that? In Russia? Uh, it's those, no, those German guy who developed uh, <laughs> uh, the, the uh, Kaiser, his name. Uh, yeah. he, uh, he has uh, ongoing uh, research done within uh, uh, cancer patients. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll send you the link to the interview and everything. And that links you to uh, other. Uh, there is that Facebook page. If you do fuck so far. Yeah. Does that? Yeah. on Facebook and it's going to pop out and they put all pretty much all the articles that exist done on Fox 04. Okay. You'll find the interview with that doctor and he talks about the next generation. Okay. Uh, and he, he makes the difference clear. He said, if you're a pretty healthy person, you want to be careful because you don't want to kill healthy cells. If you're sick or old, then yes, it will make a difference. Okay. Uh, so me, I, right now I'm doing it as a preventive measure. You know, you kill a bunch of senescent cells, not all of them. So, you know, I won't be 20 years younger in a month. But, you know, at least to slow down the process for now. So I'm not sure yet. And that's very speculative. Maybe do uh, three shots in a week and then leave it for two months and then do it again two months after. Or- Couldn't you, couldn't you just do a five day water fast? Oh, that's the thing. The water fast doesn't kill senescent cells. It just makes them dormant. When you start eating again, they pop out again. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah. So what's the autophagy we talk about in, in a water fast? Eh? Doesn't fasting drive autophagy? <coughs> Yeah, but we don't know when it starts. Does it start at three days, at seven days, at 14 days, at 30 days? Well, there's, people, there's people who think they know. I, clearly, you don't agree with them. <laughs> no, no, it's not that I don't agree. I, 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 I don't know. And there is no actual research done on that. People factually didn't document it. They, okay. you cannot, <laughs> sorry. <coughs> it does happen, yes, but when does it actually start? We don't know. It's a great thing to do, intermittent fasting, three days fast for other reasons. But to uh, get rid of senescent cells, yeah, I wouldn't count on that. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, uh, you, you really have to, uh, that, that's the line. And it's not, and, and that's a good article. It, it's, uh, it's an interview, but you have the written thing and the guy is very clear on that he said it's uh, that line he said we want that new fuck so far i don't know how they're going to call it uh 
won't take care, doesn't take care of all senescent cells. It's just a part. So probably another company right now is developing another one that will take care of another aspects of senescence. So in a few years, you're going to have a whole therapy around peptides, but it's going to be more than one. Yeah. So that, that, that's kind of the birth of, and at this point, I see it as a, as a good peptide to use carefully, not too much, you know, don't go crazy, don't get, you know, when, when uh, I, I discovered, you know, I say, okay, I will do like with the rats and do three months at uh, shot every day. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. But, you know, once in a while, you know, I, I sold a few now and people, I don't think those who bought, it's not because of the money, because if they bought two, three vials that they can afford it. Yeah. But uh, I think they're being prudent, and that's a good thing to do. Uh, you you may do two, three vials, and then leave it alone for a few months, and then do it again uh, preventively. So whatever you killed there that are sane, then you rebuild. Yeah. Senescent cells, they're, they're gone, and then bang, you do it. You, you, you go more little step by little steps. So it's going to take much longer. Yeah. But at the end, you would get the same results of getting rid of uh, senescent cells, but don't try to squeeze it in a short period of time. Right. That, that right. could be damaging. Okay. So get, give time to rebuild, throw in some BPC, so to rebuild faster, those uh, uh, little damages you do at the same time. And again, it's a question of balance. Always keep, you ten, kill 10 times more. So yeah, you do a bit of damage, but you do 10 times more good. So Right. And would you use a growth hormone secretagogue at the same time? Uh, I am. Yeah. To drive the repair and the... Yeah. 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 I don't do it for that, but uh, yeah. And, you know, a shot of uh, TB500 once in a while. Time is in beta 4. Time is in beta 4. <laughs> to be precise. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, I'm tweaking. I'm tweaking uh, with uh, those new peptides now, FOXO4, Motsi, and uh, because that, that, that's, the, the, they're new. You know, there is, uh, nobody can really talk about a big clinical experience with them yet. And uh, paper-wise, it's only basic research done on cells, on animals, and very pinpointed and it's like you know they were asking okay and those mice you know after they stopped the foxo 4 3 how long did they live well we don't know they killed them to to look at, <laughs> <laughs> to look at the organs you know so <laughs> they should save a couple <laughs> yeah they should to see okay long term what happened so that but that would be another study so they get then you end up with a six-year-old mice and you have something to talk about right because they only yeah. live two oh. years uh, uh, talking of that, let a short parenthesis on C60. Oh, carbon uh, you know, carbon 60. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the study, the studies on uh, animals, the one that initiated the whole thing, showing that uh, the mice live ninety percent longer. Yeah, but keep in mind, they started to give the C60 to very young mice not to old mice. So yes, I believe there is, but don't expect, if you start to take C60 C C when you're 60, uh, you're, you're not gonna live 90% uh, uh, longer than expected. You should have taken it when you were 20. Right. To, to have that long-term effect. And uh, I wasn't very well, and I'm still not in the details, but when I had dinner with Ben at one point, and I asked him, because I know he talked to people about that, and I asked him, what's your take on C60? And his answer was, it's a good product, but don't take too much, because it's a very strong antioxidant at low dosages, but it becomes a very strong pro-oxidant at higher dosages. And higher dose, yeah. So you have to be, again, that's another product, you have to be careful. Don't, don't push the dosages, go for the minimum uh, to have an effect and don't, don't think more is better. It's not the case with C60. Yeah. That and, uh, LL 37. Yes. Yeah, so like, uh, with, uh, don't, don't push that one too high. Yeah. No, not a good idea. <laughs> no. You're just recovering so. from that, right? Jeff? 
I had to order thymus and alpha one really quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, the funny thing is, it actually thymus and alpha one, it it kind of re-regulated things very quickly. Yeah, no, time is in, you know, one of the effect of time is in alpha one, if for cancer patients, it has a double effect. One, uh, cancer cells, they kind of develop uh, a shell around them that makes them uh, not... Like uh, invisible. The, yeah, the, the immune system doesn't recognize them. So thymosin alpha-1 breaks down that shell. It makes them visible. And at the same time, it boosts the immune system. So you are, then they can attack. The, so you, you become the medicine against uh, your own system, your own immune system works against uh, the cancer. So in the, for any kind of cancer, time as in alpha one is, is a number one. Uh, is it just product. for cancer though, or will it do that for other pathogens as well? Uh, I'm not sure. Like uh, I'm probably you're thinking about Lyme and uh, stuff yeah, like that. So, so Suzanne Turn did say that for Lyme, it will, that it does infiltrate and you know help the body identify it and break it down so see that's it's that process so i i didn't know so yeah so it, i think it she, makes sense yeah she implied that it did that for bacteria and organisms that have that cloaking kind of it's like a cloaking mechanism that it yeah. hides and somehow the thymus and alpha one like forces it to express Exactly. In a way that the that the immune system. So, time is an alpha one. It's a, it's a great and it's an amazing peptide. Uh, and again, you know, for anti aging therapy, uh, it's a good one. But then you're stuck taking it. Me, I, I like to propose. You know, I make for people when they write to me anti aging protocol. I do like I, we talked about cycles. I like so three weeks of time as in alpha one every four months. Uh, it could be part of an anti aging protocol. Huh. Okay. But of course, if you have immune system on check, uh, any little things like that, it's gonna fix it. You know, like kill what has to be killed perfect the cleanup all right we are well into over an hour and a half gentlemen so really? i think yeah I know. Yep. Time, time flies when you're having fun um so thank you again Jean francois this has been great and uh we look forward to having you back when um i don't know when we come up with new questions and or what such time as you have some new information to share with us on your on all well, the on, 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 on the page you know as people i know they were checking off me if i was alive the next day <laughs> after <laughs> my first shot you know like i know it was kind of more of a joke but you know they're they're they're, they're they were uh, they were there asking hey what are you doing yeah so yeah no so we're i mean listen it's it's uh it's a uh, an amazing field and I love the work that you're doing and thank you for being so generous with your information and for helping us out and for making all these amazing peptides available to us.